Hey, what's going on guys? So obviously I've been having some production issues here in the last few days with my videos. And although I have made several, including a detailed look of the RX 480, you guys unfortunately have seen none of those because they have somehow corrupt. But I just wanted to let you guys know that I am working on that situation. And if need be, I will do an entire rebuild of my software after the holiday weekend. In the meantime though, I know everyone who has wanted to see a review or information on the RX 480 out there has already done so. Probably many reviews as a matter of fact, so I'll be brief about this. You know, what are my overall opinions and thoughts of the RX 480? Do I find it to be a game changing value? In terms of performance at its price point, without a doubt. And I think if you watch any fairly educated review on the card, you'll see that similar views occupy the vast majority of opinions out there. Now, I'm going to get into the immediate aftermath of these cards, uh, the 4 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte variants, as well as a couple of other elephants in the chat room here. Firstly, and I know everyone's curious about this, and so am I, it appears that the RX 470 and RX 460 are due out in mid-July and the end of July, respectively. Keeping in mind, these are still unconfirmed rumors, but they are largely believed to be the case at this point. Secondly, I'm sure you've all heard that AMD have only manufactured a single RX 480. For both the 4GB and 8GB variants of these cards, they are, in fact, the exact same hardware walking off the assembly line and into retailers and eventually consumers' hands. Now, they simply use a different BIOS to nerf or new to the 4GB card and sell it at a lower price point. Uh, while it is very likely that you will be able to simply download and flash a 4GB card into the fully functional 8GB card and wind up with the identical product, uh, for about $40 less, I have not seen this BIOS leaked yet, but keep in mind this BBIOS flash was sent from AMD to reviewers and will surely become available in the coming days, weeks, or months, I'm sure. Now, while I find that completely awesome, and I would certainly be able to do that myself and want to do that, you know, I'd go ahead and buy the card for $199 at this point in time and wait for that flash to come out if I were to buy a RX 480. That's what I would do personally, and I think it's completely awesome, but I will further speculate and add some more fuel to the fire here, um, and I do believe, I'll let you guys know right now, that the RX 470, which is essentially just a cut-down version of the Polaris 10 XT GPU that ships in the RX 480, with certain stream processors disabled and memory clock speeds being slower, when shipped, I believe that this will most likely be the exact same card as well. I think it's highly likely that this card will be able to be unlocked for some users anyway and have the additional cores unlocked and able to be accessed and used as well as the memory being exactly the same. Again, the same cards. You know, I've done that in the past for the 6950 into the 6970 and have unlocked stream processors, boosted memory, etc. And while many times those cards are essentially binned down, they look at the cards and see how well they perform, if at all, with all those processors enabled. And if they don't do too well at certain speeds, or if they're just on the cusp, they will take those GPUs and put them into the lower models, such as the RX 470. But again, the silicone lottery is a fickle beast, and you may get an RX 470 that can be very easily unlocked into an RX 480, and you may not. But uh, in my assumption, AMD has run off a ton of these cards and they may not have even had time to bend these things effectively. You may be literally getting the exact same card with a different VBIOS for 149 or 179 for the 4 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte cards of the RX 470 respectively. That would be a phenomenal deal for 149 to get a card that can push full VR with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. That's exciting stuff, but we will find out here shortly, I am sure, when those cards hit the market. With that being said, there are a couple of things that I wanted to clarify here about the RX 480. First and foremost, I'd like to discuss that the RX 480 has been rumored to be having these power issues recently. I've seen these things pop up online, a couple of YouTubers saying that the RX 480 is pulling too much power out of the PCIe rail that it's sitting on, and with just one six pin power connector from the PSU, 
this card is pulling over its rated 150 watts of juice uh, when fully maxed out and stressed. Now, there is a guy, I told you guys before, he is called Adored TV on YouTube. And if you haven't checked this guy out, I would highly recommend that you go over to his channel anyway. The guy is insightful on a whole nother level. Uh, and you'll find his links below. But um, I was on his channel earlier today and I noticed that he had a, a video up about this kind of a retaliation to this accusation that the RX 480 is using too much power off of the PCIe rail, destroying motherboards, all kinds of claims out there by fanatics claiming the RX 480 is blowing up their systems or whatever. But um, he made some very logical and cogent arguments as he always does. I'm just going to give you guys a brief description of what he said. He has noted that the 8GB of VRAM on the RX 480 does not come for free in terms of power draw. And he does look at a review of Tom's Hardware, which is a great site, highly reputable, of the RX 480 8GB version, where they are really saturating that 8GB of VRAM with Metro Last Light at 4K. And even though a single RX 480 can't push that realistically at any high FPS enough to be comfortable for gaming for most people, uh, the VRAM in that situation is certainly maxed out. And as they say in the article, it is basically a worst case scenario in terms of power draw, where both the GPU is saturated with work and the VRAM is saturated with memory and being moved around, and they're being utilized at maximum capacity, basically. Uh, now, if we look at the chart from Tom's hardware during that kind of maxing out of all GPU resources available, the RX 480 is indeed at times spiking up and pulling up to 155 watts from the PCIe slot that's designed to give a maximum of only 75 watts of power to the card at any given time. Now this seems pretty bad if this is the only information that you look at. However, Tom's notes in their review that these spikes are very, very brief. They do not happen with any kind of uh, high frequency and quote, are not putting the motherboard in any immediate danger. Now, for comparison, Adored also calls attention to a number of cards that are currently available in the market, such as the GTX 960, GTX 950, and the old 750 Ti. Uh, and surely there are also cards from AMD that are currently available that we could look at it as well. But he does not do that in his review. This is just a brief comparison again. So the GTX 960 is what I'm going to look at here. Uh, now, Tom's Hardware actually used, they didn't have available a reference GTX 960, so they used a downclocked reference speed add-in board partner card, but these cards have two gigabytes of memory, or four at a maximum, but the card used for these comparisons only has two gigabytes of memory, so that should actually lower power draw in and of itself from the eight gigabytes on the RX 480. But if we take a look at the chart for the 960, we can see spikes in power taken from the PCIe rail exclusively all the way up to almost 300 watts. A far cry from the RX 480's 155 watts. But still, pulling that from a single PCIe rail, 155 for the RX 480, with very seldom spikes like that. The GTX 960 here, having almost 300 watts pulled at a much more consistent and higher frequency, than the spikes found on the RX 480. So Tom's did note in their review of the GTX 960 that this will likely also not damage the board immediately, but they do note that uh, long-term impacts of these large fluctuations in power may affect the board or even other components in the system as their power will likely also fluctuate as a result. Mentioning that the sound card in there would pop during these fluctuations, which is not really a good thing in my opinion. But if you look at the reviews for the, uh, the 750Ti or the GTX 950, a single PCIe rail card with no extra power coming from the power supply whatsoever, uh, you can also see fluctuations in there and spikes up to 141 watts off of that single rail as well. So certainly not out of the realm of uh, what's been realistic here in the past. Check out Adored's look at that if you guys want more details about the power consumption issue, which again, in my opinion, is not really an issue, but yeah, it's there if you guys want to look at it. Uh, now, one thing I want to just mention about Adored, uh, his look at that as well, is he mentions in his video that he believes the 8GB of VRAM on the RX 480 
has really no business being there, and then it's basically an increase in power consumption that the card really can't benefit from anyway, uh, because it can't really push the amount of pixels it takes to utilize that amount of VRAM effectively. Um, and although I do agree with him that the 4 gigabyte card is probably the sweet spot right now for a single RX 480, uh, in terms of what that card can push pixel-wise, what that memory pool needs to be able to hold in terms of textures, other assets, etc. Uh, it cannot be denied that having the other 4 gigabytes of VRAM for a total of 8 will benefit people, surely, in crossfire scenarios, because the RAM pool is not aggregated between those two cards. Basically, the two cards' memory pools remain independent of one another, and are only used for rendering on the individual cards themselves. So, you know, if you have more power to render a large num number of pixels, which you will with two GPUs, at high resolutions, more AA, etc., uh, you're going to need that additional VRAM and space on each individual card to accommodate the extra data without falling back to your system RAM, which is obviously not ideal. Also, having said that, uh, there are certainly cases where users like myself uh, that enjoy prettier graphics as opposed to higher frame rates in certain scenarios could potentially benefit from the additional memory even on a single card configuration and certain games just enjoy the extra space anyway such as Tomb Raider you know giving much more performance to cards with larger VRAM pools as opposed to smaller ones. Uh, games are using more and more memory these days and with each of the current gen consoles offering a larger than 4GB chunk of their available 8GB pool, uh, two graphics, four developers, they are often inclined to use at least that much on a PC. So ultimately, pending release of the RX 460 in late July and the RX 470 in mid-July, hoping those work out to be, you know, highly just effective for consumers at those price points in terms of delivering great performance and offering better bang for the buck to consumers that are able to buy those cars, they don't have a thousand dollars in their wallets for a GTX 1080 or a GTX 1070, but still want playable frame rates at 1080p, 1440p, and can do a lot with those cards in the future with all technologies built into those things, and even greater performance waiting in the wings with things like DirectX 12 and Vulkan, optimizations on the driver set, etc., that are still in their infancy, I'm sure that we will see those things come to fruition here as the days go on. But ultimately, these are the exact same card at $199 and $240 bucks for the RX 480. You know, you can go ahead and increase the clock speed on the 4GB model to the same 8GHz speed that you would have on the 8GB model and get that higher uh, memory bandwidth, the same as you're going to find on the GTX 1070, as a matter of fact, for only $200. Bucks. And with that imminent release of the BIOS leak, you'll probably be able to unlock the other 4GB of that VRAM uh, very, very soon. It's only a matter of time, in my opinion. But um, yeah, these other issues, as far as the power is concerned, are marginal spikes in power draw, in my opinion. Nothing to be concerned about. Tom's gives it a thumbs up and says it's definitely safe, and other cards have gone there before, and much greater frequencies and much greater power height in terms of power spikes than I certainly believe Tom's hardware. But would I be more comfortable with a partner card that offered a little bit more headroom there for power from the PSU? possibly bringing into the fray an 8-pin power plug and giving a little bit, little bit more juice from the PSU so I didn't have to pull so much from the PCIe rail uh, in cases of high stress like that. Obviously, I would. Uh, the GTX 1070, as a matter of fact, is rated at 150 watts, just like the RX 480 is. It does incorporate an 8-pin. However, I see no reason for those who purchased an RX 480 reference card to be concerned about this whatsoever. There are far greater travesties to be worried about and other currently available GPUs in the market uh, as far as power consumption and spikes on that rail are concerned. So I say to you, go forth and enjoy your games on that brand new beastly little card. Uh, enjoy your Independence Day weekend, and I will see you guys hopefully very soon in a rendered video in the next one. Peace out.